Francisco, where I live now. Uh, the Black Cat Cafe, where my mother Claire and my father Sam they hung out in 1940, right up till Pearl Harbor. And then uh, Claire went to work for the state government, and Sam went into the army, like so many people did, of course. Kukowski did not. He was rejected for psychological. <laughs> and the psychologist said, listen, um, after he evaluated him, he said, this was an L.A. induction day, he said, listen, uh, Mr. Bukowski, I'm having a party of writers and artists My home in the Hollywood Hills. Would you like to come? No. <laughs> so so um, the Black Hat Cafe was, was started, I believe, sometime in the 1920s and went through many owners. But you see that one great photo of the, of the man relaxing in a chair, um, in a chair, that's Charlie Habercorn. It was a Swiss immigrant to the United States who bought the Black Hat Cafe and owned it for a few years. Um, after my parents left, it was sold to another guy who kept it going into the 60s, um, and it was the first really openly gay lesbian bar in Northern California. That's not why my parents left, they left because of the war. <laughs> my father has a story of a lesbian um, who was a dock worker, and he said she would clean out the black cat if anybody gave any trouble. <laughs> yeah, she was a real, real tough one. Uh, William Saroyan would hang out there when he was in town. Um, there's a photo on this side of the, because there aren't captions on him, of, of an artist with, a, with kind of a Bogart-like fedora named Jose Ramis, who was a Catalonian who had come to the United States in 1923, and he went home the year Franco died. He went back home. He wouldn't go back to Spain while Franco was there. And uh, he did go back and, and spent the remainder of his days there. He was an um, artist who painted the California missions, and all those mission paintings are in their own little museum on Palma de Mallorca now. Uh, but Jose was one of my father and my mother's best friends. Don Kingman, D-O-N-G, um, he's in a couple of the photos. He's in the photo of the group of North Beach people who are in that scene in the countryside. And you see my mother holding her arms up in that photo at the back. And then down in the front is Don Kingman. He had um, his, his watercolors on the cover of Time and Fortune many times. He did the sets for the movie The Flower Drum Song, Already Ancient History, the 1960s. Um, <coughs> And all through that period, my father was taking photos of, of the, the tail end of the Depression. And you could, if you read my piece there, you know that he rode the rods, both in the 20s, when he left a Jewish boys' school in, uh, was in Boyle Heights, and left home and rode the freights up the San Joaquin Valley, met a farmer in uh, Fresno, and worked for him for a while, and sent the money home to his mother here. And, and then he did the same thing in the 30s. And he could talk with great knowledge about the Great Northern Railroad, the Santa Fe, Southern Pacific, and what it was like being, uh, you know, sort of blown away by the night. And Kukowski, um, as I say in my piece, he used to talk about Neely's tough old dad who rode the freight. And that photo of Bukowski in a freight car, we took him down to the rail yard. It took about 45 minutes to lift him <laughs> into the car. And my father just jumped right on it with his camera. You know, as if it was, it wasn't moving, but as if it was moving. He, sh he showed us how he did it when freights were moving at about 15 miles an hour. It was a way of getting on. We had to lift him up there, and even when he was up there, he was unsteady. But he <laughs> loved it. One, one, thing about, one thing about, I know a lot of people here are, are great Bukowski readers and fans. One thing about Hank, he, he uh, loved the camera. And uh, we started hanging out in the early 60s. And I really should have had that camera going then. I should have asked my father to come around there. But the, the oldest shot in there is Hank and I on little hobby horses. <laughs> and that was his daughter, Marina, who now is about 45 and has two children. Um, and uh, I realized, I was wondering why my eyes were closed, and I realized I was at tail, frankly, I was at the tail end of an acid trip. <laughs> Two essay, and that's why I was, I was sort of halfway between zonked and post zonked. And Hank was Hank was hamming it up, but we didn't bring him. Not hams, it's poors. Yeah, thank you. And uh, the photo in Skid Row, 
Now, I hope this doesn't belie the captions. I wrote these captions for Danny. I, history, it's one thing about photos, even a photo, you know, you think it reads as history, but it doesn't. Because we all read different things into it. And so even a photo changes history. But the trouble with writing a caption is, I said to Danny, send all the captions to me so I don't contradict myself. But, uh, <laughs> writing about more photos, because I might change the caption. But really, he didn't want, he was embarrassed about going to Skid Row. Because I can tell you for sure, Charles Bukowski, he, he was fearful, like a lot of us are, of being on Skid Row, of ending up there. But he did everything he could all his life not to end up there. And it's, the secret of his great success uh, was that he was solidly middle class. That's why he ended up in San Pedro, a beautiful home with an Acura legend and a BMW and a jacuzzi and a nice swimming pool <laughs> and walnut floors. And we lived so close to the Emerald City of glitz and glamour. But my father was, he did his work really under the underground. And he didn't connect with the mainstream, you know, the mainline art scene. He d it just didn't happen. And so I think what you're getting is this gold, this secret gold from the deep caverns, uh, in a way. Um, he didn't do like one of the things Bukowski said in the old days. He says, you know, you have to go in the arena. You have to take your punches. And, and I'd go over there sometime. I'd always hear that this was in the days of typewriters, not these things we have now, uh, computers. But, you know, tap, 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 tap. And I, 512 Fort Long Street, isn't that right? Yeah, right off of Normandy. That's where the majority of the photos were taken on that block. If you go up Normandy towards sunset and you turn on the Long Train, there's a Russian church in the middle of the block. That's where the building's still there. That's where most of these photos were taken. Bukowski in front of his drawings, he thought they were as good as Rembrandt. <laughs> you know, and the, the one of Bukowski posing, where I think he's a very, he thought of himself as a very ugly person. He played off that image. I think he's, I, frankly, I think he's a very handsome guy. When I mean, you look, you know, beyond all that, that acne scarred face, because that's what it was. He used to say, before I was famous, I was just an acne scarred face. When I got famous, it's a face of madness. <laughs>